Hey everyone, Warix here. So we're back with the final spec of Paladin in the Beginner's Guide series that we've been doing for the past uh, couple of months really. Uh, this time we're going to look at Holy Paladin, which is going to be the main spec for the Paladin that I play when I do play my Paladin, which is admittedly rare, but wanted to go ahead and give you guys this video on this to help you get started with your Holy Paladin if you're looking to t pick up Paladin. It's become a very much a popular healer in the last few months, and so I imagine there's a lot of you that are interested in learning more about it. So that's what hopefully this video will help you get started with on your Holy Paladin. So what we're going to do in this video and what we do in this series as a whole is that we look at uh, major points of your spell books. We look at passives. In this case, we'll look at healing abilities, offensive abilities, defensives, utility. Um, and then we look at uh, rotation. We look at talents. We look at um, stat priority. And we also will look at legendaries. We will not cover covenants or soul binds or conduits. We'll do that in another video. So be on the lookout for that one coming hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And then uh, we'll be moving on to the next class after that. I haven't decided if it's going to be, uh, most likely it'll be Druid. It's kind of what I'm leaning towards now, but I may be, do, may be doing Hunter or Warlock to go with it. Um, so comment below if you have an idea of which of those three you prefer. Speaking of commenting, make sure you also like and share the video as well. Subscribe to the channel, cost you nothing. I know I say this on every single video, but it really does help. Definitely help me get the support that I'm looking to obtain and helps me push towards uh, the goals that I have for this channel. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get into the Paladin. So let's go ahead and get you into game with me. So we're gonna transition. All right, now we're in game. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna look at your passive abilities. Uh, so Holy Paladin only has a couple that are really of note we're going to start with infusion of light so basically when you crit with holy shock your flash of light cast time is or excuse me the mana cost of your next flash of light is reduced by 30 percent or the healing of your holy light is increased by 30 percent um, so depending on the style of build that you play you may or may not be using this any every time it comes up there are definitely times where you're going to completely ignore it and depending on the build that you run, there may be times where the whole point of the build is to fish for this passive. So we'll talk about the two style of builds uh, and the two play styles a little bit later on. Only other one that's really important to note is the mastery, Lightbringer. You increase your healing done by up to a certain percentage based on your mastery uh, amount, based on the proximity to your target. So the closer you are to your target, the more healing you're going to do, which really solidifies you as someone that's going to be in the middle of it all. Um, this means that you could, of course, be lined up next right up to your tank, but you could also be the person that's assigned to heal kind of ranged when they'd have to do certain maybe individual mechanics. You can kind of be back in the range part, heal up with them and you know really take advantage of it. So it has some flexibility, but for the most part, you're gonna be right in the mix with your melee and your tank, because in Mythic Plus in particular, you're mostly healing your tank. In raid scenarios, you're mostly healing your tank. So that's gonna be just where your mastery gets the most uh, benefit from it. So those really the only two passives that we talked about. You saw a third one there, but that's a talent, which we'll be talking about in just a little bit. So let's move on to your healing abilities. So the first one is the basic standard heal, Flash of Light. Uh, you expend a large amount of mana, it's about 2200 at my stats, um, to quickly heal a friendly target for you know about 2K at my stats. So this is your I need to get a heal out quickly on this target and I don't have any instance available. So Holy Shock, Word of Glory, uh, Light of Dawn, whatever the case may be, and I need to get out a heal off fast. So you cash Flash of Light. It's inefficient, so you can't just sit there and spam this all the time, otherwise you will eventually run out of mana, but it is something that's good to get you out, you know, get out something quick. Uh, and then of course with Infusion of Light, this mana cost reduced by 30%, so that's taking about 600 mana off of, or, off of it or so, if I did the math right. So makes it a little bit more efficient. The other kind of major casted heal is Holy Light. This one costs significantly about 700 less mana for me. Um, it's an efficient healing spell, so it's a longer cast time though at 2.3 seconds, whereas Flash of Light is uh, 1.4 seconds on my stats, so you can see almost a full second difference, uh, but it heals for a big number, about 2849 at my stats. So. This is when, if you if the damage intake is low but consistent, you can just use Holy Light to kind of heal up all of that and keep a pretty efficient mana. 
Next up will be Holy Shock. This is gonna be the number one thing that you want to use every time. So make sure this is in a place where you can feel comfortable using it very often because you are going to use it often. So this has a hasted cooldown, 6.8 seconds on mine. I think it's eight seconds base. You trigger a burst of light on the target, dealing a little bit of holy damage to an enemy or a bigger number of healing to an ally. And baseline, it has 30% additional crit chance. So uh, helps you with your infusion of light fishing, but also just has a very much a baseline talent. This one you're gonna wanna use anytime that it's available, whether it's on a teammate or on an enemy, you wanna use it all the time. It's instant cast. It's easily available to you all the time. 1600 mana, it's very efficient as well. Even with the mana increase that it got in 9.0 play five, still the most efficient heal that you have. Next up, Beacon of Light. So Beacon of Light is basically you wrap a single ally in holy energy. Uh, you causing your heals on other party or raid members to also heal that ally for 50% of the amount healed. Uh, also, holy power. Paladin just across the board is build a build expender spec. So holy shock generates a holy power. And then if you flash of light on your uh, flash of light or holy light onto your beacon target, you're also going to gain one holy power. So you can see I've got this little uh, minion here for the Revendreth, complete Revendreth quest with your trainee. Um, so let me go ahead and get my beacon of light on this character. Where's it at on my keybinds? Let me hover over it real quick because I forget. Oh, it's right here. It's shift one. So you can see this, what it looks like. And then if I go and heal myself, say with a holy light, you can see I they also get a little bit of healing. But then if I heal them with a holy light, you can see I get one holy power. And then of course, if I holy shock them, holy power, and you can see I get infusion of light. So this is gonna be good that you always wanna have this up on the tank, most likely, because that way when you have to spot heal a party member or you holy shock a party member, you also holy shock the, uh, or you also activate the beacon on the, uh, on the tank. So you just are always healing the tank. All right, let's talk about the two ways that you spend the holy power that you get. The single target version is over here, word of glory. So three holy power, you basically instantly, instant cast, big, big heal as you can see 3,500, bigger than anything else on my numbers that you're seeing. It's the biggest single target heal that you have. Anytime a single target needs a big chunk of healing, you're gonna wanna use this ability if you have the holy power for it. For AOE situations, you're gonna wanna use Light of Dawn. So this unleashes a wave of holy energy healing up to 500 allies within 15 yard frontal cone. So this one you do have to have a little bit of positioning and aiming for, but if you do it correctly, then you're gonna hit all your targets and get pretty good healing out. It does require stacked up groups, so if you're trying to heal all your range and you're standing by your tank, you're probably just best off Word of Glory and then trying to spot heal through Flash of Light, Holy Light, or Holy Shock on the other targets, unless there's just a real emergency going on. All right, and then the last main healing spell is Light of the Martyr. You sacrifice a portion of your own health to instantly heal an ally, and you take damage equal to 50% of the healing amount done. It doesn't trigger Beacon of Light healing, and it cannot be cast on yourself. So you can use this to basically sacrifice your health to heal someone else. So you have to be very mindful of this. You don't want to use it right as big damage events are coming. Um, you want to use it if you know you're going to be able to recover really, really easily and really quickly. So those are the main healing spells that you're going to want to use. Basically, it's Holy Shock on cooldown, Word of Glory or Light of Dawn as your spenders. And then you want to use your main Holy Light and Flash of Light as like filler healing spells when you are either low on Holy Power or are waiting on cooldowns to come back up. Um, but with the talent build that you mainly run, it's going to be rare that you cast Holy Light and Flash of Light because you can reset Holy Shock cooldowns extremely fast. But let's move on. So let's look at the offensive abilities for Paladin. The first one that we are going to look at is Crusader Strike. So you spend a little bit of mana, hasted, hasted cooldown, two charges, you strike a damage for strike a target from you know a little bit of physical damage, but you generate a holy power. So there's another holy power generating ability. So you can holy shock, ho holy or flash of light your beacon target, and crusader strike. So three ways uh, to get your holy power generated. Now, so you want to use this basically as often as you can. Uh, in order to generate and maximize your holy power. All right, next up, what I think is one of the most iconic paladin spells, 
judgment. So you judge the target dealing big single target damage and causing the target to take 30% increased damage from your next Crusader Strike or Holy Shock. It's always a good idea to try to use this and then Holy Shock or Crusader Strike because it's just going to do bigger damage when you're using it as a more offensive tool. Hasted cooldown as well, so haste is going to be a good stat to help get your Crusader Strike and Judgment cooldowns down, letting you do more damage and kind of maximizing the efficiency of your heals. So you can see there's a lot of synergies even between the offensive abilities and your healing. Next up, Consecration. So Consecration, pretty standard. You just lay it on the ground. Again, hasted cooldown, 8.2 seconds with a 12 second duration. You only have one at a time. Does damage to everything in the area. Since you're standing on top of it, of the tank in the melee anyways, it's always good to throw this down because you're gonna just passively be doing damage with this. So always good to have this again on the button that you know you can access pretty quickly and you're gonna be using it quite often. Hammer of Wrath also generates holy power so a fourth way now to generate your holy power you can again hurl the hammer 30 yard range big holy damage uh, usable on enemies that less that have less than 20 percent health or during avenging wrath or during ashen hollow if you go by Anthea like i have uh, so this becomes a big priority in uh, situations where you don't need to heal you want to use this ability first and foremost uh, even above crusader strike because it's just big damage for the holy power that you're get, generating out of it and then finally, Shield of the Righteous. This is also a Holy Power Spender. If there's absolutely no healing that needs to be done and you have max Holy Power, just use Shield of the Righteous. Deals uh, damage to everything in front of you and increases armor for a little bit. So increases your survivability, does a little bit of damage in the meantime. It's just a really good, efficient way to use your Holy Power if you do not need to do any healing of any kind. All right, let's talk about cooldowns. So Paladins have three major cooldowns that you want to look at. So first off will be Aura Mastery. So this one empowers your chosen aura for eight seconds with Devotion Aura, increases uh, damage reduction that you get from it. For Concentration Aura, it uh, makes them immune to silences and interrupts. For Retribution Aura, increases the duration of Avenging Wrath. And for Crusader Aura, it gives you another 60% mount speed. So by default, you're always gonna wanna use Devotion Aura, kind of skipping ahead to the Aura section, but Devotion Aura always, because you're going to use Aura Mastery in con conjunction with Devotion Aura, giving 3% base and then another 15% during Aura Mastery. So you're giving 18% damage reduction, which is pretty big for a three minute cooldown. So you have to be mindful of how often you use this and when you use it. But when you use it, you're going to help reduce the damage of everybody in your team very well. So it's a pretty, pretty big cooldown and has really, really big impact. A lot of the times you see Holy Paladins brought to raid, even if they're not the best healers, they're brought to raid simply because Aura Mastery is such a big, it's essentially like a slightly weaker powered barrier. So you can Devotion Aura, a major damage event, and then barrier the next one, and then go from there. Uh, Avenging Wrath, kind of the staple Paladin wings. Everyone knows about Avenging Wrath. For Holy Paladin, it increases your healing by 30% and your crit strike by 30% for 20 to 25 seconds, depending on the talent build that you run. So just extremely powerful, really good to have. You want to use it anytime there's a lot of damage going out. So for example, in Prideful, you maybe want to use Pride, uh, Avenging Wrath during Pride so that you can keep your team healed up as the damage ramps up on Pride the longer that it lives. And of course, Lay on Hands, 40 yard range, 10 minute cooldown. Heals a friendly target for an amount equal to your maximum health um, and causes forbearance for 30 seconds. So emergency, oh crap, I don't have anything else going on. I need to use this ability to keep my tank alive heal. Uh, heals them basically for, for me to be about, you know, as you can see, around 22,000 health. So not quite a full heal, but pretty close to it. Um, enough that you can steady the tank and then get caught up and you know, continue moving on with the next thing. All right. There are two major defensives that you want to look at as a Holy Paladin. So there is Divine Protection. So it's a one minute cooldown, reducing all damage you take by 20% for eight seconds. So you have your own 20% DR. You couple that with Aura Mastery, giving you another 18% DR. You can get almost 40% damage reduction on yourself, which makes you one of the tankiest, if not the tankiest healer by a pretty long shot. So very powerful on a one minute cooldown. Be very liberal with its usage. If you're in an event that's gonna take a lot of AOE damage, it's always gonna be good to just DP it and go from there. And then of course, Divine Shield, good old bubble, big old immunity. Everyone knows about the bubble. So not much more to say on that. 
All right, utility, pretty much the same across the board as with the protection and retribution videos. So not if you've watched those two videos, this is gonna be a lot of repeat information. Blessing of Freedom, of course, grants immunity to movement and pairing effects, which is really good. Blessing of Protection, which makes them immune to physical, damp physical and harmful effects for 10 seconds. It does cause your tank to drop threat, so be mindful of using it on the tank, but if someone pulls aggro or has an event that's going, like uh, Wicked Rush, for example, you can bop them so that they're immune to it and they don't take the damage or the bleed, uh, for example, in the gen general call fights or still in general fights. Blessing of Sacrifice. You're going to reduce the damage that your target takes by 30%, and you're going to suffer 75% of the damage prevented. You can use this in conjunction with Divine Shield to cause a big immunity to, uh, to a big damage event or something along those lines. All right. uh, there is your Cleanse. Which for Paladins, you can cleanse poison, disease, and magic effects. So no curses. So if you have a, a curse-heavy fight, it's a curse of obliteration and Halls of Atonement, for example. You want to have a decurse class, so what shaman, mages, druid, something like that, that's going to be able to help decurse and kind of cover all the bases. And then Hammer of Justice, which we all know about the Hodge. You know, stun your target for six seconds. A one minute cooldown. Uh, right here. One minute cooldown, stun the target for six seconds. So it gives you a way to help with your interrupts, even though you don't have an interrupt yourself. You can use Hammer of Justice to stun an unstunnable and unkickable cast. Loyal Beasts and Halls of Atonement again, for example. So lots of utility. There's even more beyond that with like Redemption and your like big mass res, which is Absolution. Those things are obviously very useful. Divine Steed is your movement ability. So, you know, there's a lot, of, you have a ton of tools at your disposal as a, as a Retribution Paladin. So you definitely want to make sure that you take time to figure out when and how all of these are going to work for you. Let's move on to Talents. So the Holy Paladin Talent Tree, I honestly think is pretty straightforward. I think there's really only one build that's really working right now with some choice of what you can do, some based on situation. On the 15 row, Light's Hammer is garbage. Don't use it. Bestow Faith is good for like beginners if you want another kind of little heal. Um, this one, you know, basically heals the target after five seconds and generates a Holy Power. Uh, this is good in PvP since you won't be doing a ton of Crusader striking. So this just gives you another way to have a heal in PvP to kind of help your teammates stay alive. But in most PvE content, you're going to want to take Crusader's Might. When you Crusader Strike, you're going to reduce the cooldown of Holy Shock by one and a half seconds. So you can see here where you basically would Holy Shock a target. So we'll come here and show you. Um, pay attention to this right here. So I'm going to Holy Shock this training dummy. Crusader Strike, you can see. Crusader Strike, you can see. And I've got it back up. And then you can see Crusader Strike, I've got it back. So you can see just how like effective that overall is. We'll just let her keep going with that. So Crusader's Might, you're gonna wanna use it for both the Glimmer build and the Resplendent Light, Holy Light build, um, which we'll talk about the differences in those in a little bit because it gives you more Holy Shocks. You wanna fish for as many of those as you can. On the 25 row, Holy Prism. I don't really ever see anyone take advantage of it, so I wouldn't stress too much about it. Judgment of Light is going to be your best definitely in raid settings, but probably even a better one in Mythic Plus. Judgment causes the next 25 successful attacks against the target to heal them for a little bit. So you think, oh, it's only 76 healing, but when you're doing that over 25 times, it can add up to a couple thousand healing that you're doing. So just, it's very good passive healing that you're doing. And, you know, keeping Judgment up as much as humanly possible is pretty easy. Saved by the Light is another potential one. Um, when your ally, when you, when an ally with your Beacon of Light is damaged below 30% health, they absorb the next damage. You cannot shield the same person twice this way within one minute. So this is good for kind of giving your tank just a little bit more of... What buff did I just get? Oh, Euphoria. Uh, nah, yeah, forgot about that. So this gives your tank... A, just a little bit of a damage absorb just gives it makes them a little bit good on lower health but uh, this one is okay but not great i think judgment of light is probably the best in all situations 30 row take whatever you want blinding light tends to be the best one because it's a disorient um, which can be another way for you to stop spell casting so all very good on the 35 row all of these have real good uses depending on what you need so unbreakable spirit reduces the cooldown of divine shield divine protection and lay on hands by 30 percent so it makes your defensives available a lot more often. So depending on the fight, might be very good. 
Cavalier makes your Divine Steed give two charges. Um, there is a finesse conduit called Light's Barding that extends the time that you're on your Divine Steed. So once you start getting that conduit and you level it up, this talent I think starts to fall out of favor because you don't really need it unless you're open world traversing a long way, such as Maul. And then Rule of Law is going to be one that I think a lot of people are going to take because this is a uh, two charge, 30 second recharge that basically increases the reach of your mastery by 50%. So if you remember your Holy Paladin mastery is based off proximity. I think it's the number is 10 yards. So this gives you another five yards for your mastery to be effective. So this is going to be good in both raid and some, some mythic plus scenarios. Really, all of these work for different reasons. You can pick any of them for the situation that you want. Just go from there. On the 40 row, Seraphim is a good ability, but you don't want to really be spending Holy Power on it if you can help it, because you want to be spending them almost always on Light of Dawn or on Word of Glory. So this one doesn't really see a ton of play right now. Holy Avenger triples your Holy Power generation for 20 seconds. You don't really have a problem generating Holy Power anymore with Crusader Strike, Holy Shock, Beacon of Light, Target Healing, uh, Hammer of Wrath, like all of that stuff gives Holy Power. And so because of that, like you don't have problems generating Holy Power. So this talent, unless you're just really, really struggling generating, I don't see where this sees play right now. So that kind of leaves Divine Purpose as the baseline kind of always on choice. Holy Power abilities have a 15% chance to make your next Holy Power, Holy Power ability free and do 20% more healing in this case. So just very good to have. It's always good, always on, going from there. 45 row, uh, Sanctified Wrath re increases your Avenging Wrath uh, by 25% and also reduces Holy Shock's cooldown by 40%. So this is very good for maintaining your Holy, holy, uh, holy Shock uptime. Trying to get as many glimmer of lights out trying to get more infusion of light fishing so just very very effective stuff so that you can um, use it so this is just a good general talent avenging crusader basically event replaces avenging wrath and basically when you deal damage you also do healing um, this talent isn't seeing a lot of play it was pretty popular in bfa but in shadowlands we haven't seen it because sanctified wrath and awakening are both becoming much more popular for various reasons. There's probably a lot of math reasons behind it that I'm not that well versed in. Uh, you can use this, but on a two minute cooldown, it's the same as Avenging Wrath, but I just don't see where, uh, I just don't see where this is gonna be super valuable. I mean, you could use it in combination with like Ashen Hollow uh, if you're Venthyr. So there's potential there, but that's gonna make basically you a super ridiculous throughput monster during Ashen Hollow and crap outside of it so there's just like a risk reward benefit that's not a risk reward cost effect that is not going to be that beneficial to you awakening basically when you use word of glory or light of dawn you have a 15 percent chance to get you avenging wrath so rng procs on your avenging wrath so this is also very good very popular talent very good in both pve and pvp so this is the other possibility so sanctified wrath or awakening you can pick either one i think both of them are perfectly fine um, it's just a matter of preference. Uh, I was running Sanctified Wrath but for the Holy Shock cooldown, but I'm probably going to be switching to Awakening here soon because getting random Wings procs is going to make everything a little bit better overall. On the 50 row, 95% of the time you're going to run Glimmer. Basically, Holy Shock leaves a Glimmer of Light. This is the old Azerite trait, come back as a talent. When you Holy Shock, all targets with Glimmer of Light are damaged or healed depending on enemy or ally. You can have Glimmer out on 8 targets at a time. Obviously, big synergies with Divine Toll, the Kyrian ability, which gets you five Holy Shocks out at one point. But even without Holy Shock, uh, Divine Toll rather, if you're Venthyr, Necrolord, or Night Fae, you're still getting a lot of Glimmer uptime with even a, a good basic amount of haste. Um, you can get some pretty decent Glimmer uptime as long as you're managing the Glimmer really effectively. The other one is the Beacon of Faith, makes you a second target. Um, so it heals both. So this could be good in tank, you know, double tank situations where. The tanks are taking consistent damage, think Sludge Fist, but it's niche and not as powerful as Glimmer. Beacon of Virtue is might see some play in Mythic Plus. Basically, it gets rid of Beacon of Light and makes it more of a 15 second duration uh, cooldown or a 15 second cooldown with a 8 second duration. So basically, when you, you apply a Beacon of Light to your target and the 300 allies, so it makes uh, Paladin AoE healing, which is generally the area that they're a little bit weaker in, a little bit better. 
So you see a lot of upper end holy paladins playing this on using this a lot basically on pride, but there is room for it, but I don't think it's overall like something that you want to take all the time. It's got some niche use situations. It shines really well in that niche, but outside of it, it's not really as effective as Glimmer of Light, which is just always very good. So what is the rotation, so to speak, for Holy Paladin? Well, you obviously want to keep tank up. We'll use Kesha, who's been over here beating on this target for the last like 10 minutes. So basically you want to keep beacon on your tank. You want a Holy Shock on cooldown. You know, use Crusader Strike to build HP and then uh, Word of Glory or Light of Dawn, Consecration down all the time. Use this, you can see, you know, got your judgment going. Doesn't trigger on mine, so just something to be aware of. And then Consecration, and then you use your Casted Heals as like a last resort. So you can see, say she's, I got, you know, obviously no Holy Power right here, but I can use this get some efficient heals going out or get these faster heals and you know drain my mana pool much faster and things like that so that's kind of the basic rotation with the uh, holy paladin you're just basically trying to use as many instant casts as much as possible you're overall going to be a very efficient healer because you're basically using either you know holy power spenders or, or you're using kind of instant heals all the time so you can see just with that right there like i got what 10,000 healing done um, no issues at all so and I didn't use a single point of mana or very little mana so Holy Paladin focuses a lot on instant cast and spending holy power so as a result you're not using your casted heals a ton which means you're very very mana efficient and in things like mythic plus that means you're basically having no downtime waiting for you to drink all right let's talk stat priority so stat priority is gonna depend actually Excuse me, we're going to go back and talk about another build called the Holy Light build. So there is a legendary which we'll talk about called Inflorescence of the Sunwell, which empowers your infusion of light to be even stronger. So there is a build with a conduit called Resplendent Light that basically means that when you get infusion of light, uh, hang on, let's get over here and get infusion of light going. Oh, come on. Come on. There we go. So when you get infusion of light basically it makes it so that it has two charges and because you buffs holy light like mad so you can see there 4300 healing on holy light because it's 30 percent stronger it makes the holy light healing even stronger with two charges and resplendent light makes it basically splash to everyone around your target this is very very good in raid situations but there's two different stat priorities for those builds so if you're using a Glimmer build, you're going to want a lot of haste because it reduces the cooldown on a Holy Shock. So you get more Holy Shocks out, which is the point of the Glimmer build is you want to be using Holy Shock every single moment that you can. After that, you want Mastery so that you can get better healing for those targets close to you with Versatility and Crit kind of being down the list a little bit for both. Um, you don't want to go out of your way to ignore them, but you're not. if you have a choice between like a haste mastery or a haste crit piece you're going to want to use the haste mastery piece if it's like mastery crit versus mastery verse you kind of want to maybe go mastery crit something along those lines so as long as you're building out with either haste or mastery as your big stats the other two you just kind of take them as you get them now if you're using the holy light build crit strike becomes your most important stat because if you can crit strike on a 60 percent boosted holy light it's just going to be big burst healing uh, that then splashes around to everyone around them. It just ends up being very, very powerful. It's a build that I'm really interested in trying, but unfortunately it's not very good in Mythic Plus. It is only a raid build, so you'd have to get into Nathria for that. I'm not gonna see this character getting into Nathria anytime, as you can see at 146 eye level. I'm not getting into Castle soon. Uh, but crit, haste, mastery, versatility is gonna be the balance, so just go straight down the list here. For the holy light build all right let's talk legendaries so legendaries for holy paladin are pretty simple shock barrier is the one that you want to use for your glimmer build holy shocks basically gives them an absorb equal to 20 percent of, of the holy shock 
damage or healing every six seconds and you can protect up to five targets at a time of course glimmer caps at eight but if you're giving five people absorb shields pretty good this has got good use in both mythic plus and in raid even in pvp as well so uh, this is just your best kind of all around legendary if you're playing the glimmer build um, it's just going to be the best one um, the other one that goes back to the holy light build as you can see here inflorescence of the sunwell infusion elevate has one additional charge and its effects are increased by 30 percent so basically you go from 30 percent increased healing on your uh, or 30 you know 30 percent increased healing on holy light or 30 percent reduced cost on flash of light you're getting 60 percent on both of those and then like i said there's a conduit called resplendent light which makes your holy light heal splash to other targets and so it just makes that holy light spell like the number one healing thing that you do and then of course you would you still use word of glories and light of dawns in place of that um, that's why the build doesn't change you still want to use crusaders might to get the holy shock reduction so you can get as many infusion of lights as you can and that's also why crit is such a big important stat for that build um, this one again it's only val valid in raid it is not optimal for mythic plus you want to go the shock barrier glimmer builds um, but if you're looking for something that isn't constantly managing glimmer you can use Inflorescence of the Sunwell, go from there. The Holy Light build doesn't change. You know, you maybe go Awakening over Sanctified Wrath, but other than that, you're using all of the same talents, so you still have Glimmer. Glimmer just becomes a little bit less of a priority as a result. All right, so that's the Holy Paladin video, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful to you. Definitely leave comments below if you have any further questions uh, or concerns. If you're looking for something more advanced, a couple of websites that you can go visit. Obviously, Wowhead with uh, Pelniol's uh, guide. I hope I said your name correctly. Pelniol, thank you. The other one is wingsisup.com, which is Elsmere, who's the number one healer in Mythic Plus in the world right now. Um, he does a website that's all things Holy Paladin healing in both, both Mythic Plus and raid situations. So definitely go check out that website as well. Again, wingsisup.com. Um, going from there. So that ends the basic guides for all the specs of Paladins. We'll do the Soulbinds, Conduits, and Covenants for the next uh, couple of videos for this class. And then we'll be moving on to, again, most likely Druid as the next class that we'll be talking about. So until the next video, all, I hope you all stay safe. I hope you all get scheduled for your vaccines. And I will see you next time.